Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support. Please subscribe. The terrifying and brutal execution of Catherine Howard, fifth wife to Henry VIII. Catherine's story is one of the most upsetting and tragic of Henry VIII's wives. She suffered far more than she ever should have and met her end via the executioner's axe. In our previous videos, we have explored Catherine's teenage years and then delved into her arrest and the interrogations she was subjected to. Henry VIII was a brute, and the men doing his bidding knew all too well how to carry out his will. Poor Catherine had admitted to adultery and premarital sex, and when the law changed and the Royal Assent by Commission Act 1541 was introduced, it meant there was no need for a trial and the evidence was stacked against the helpless Catherine Howard, who was then sentenced to death. Catherine had been found guilty of committing treason against the king by having an adulterous affair with Thomas Culpepper, a man who was close to Henry. Initially, Catherine spent her imprisonment at Sion Abbey, but then, after two months, laws of the council came to fetch Catherine from Sion on the 10th of February, 1542. At this point, Catherine had spent two months a prisoner, and her reaction was one of pure panic. Of course, Catherine knew what to expect, and that absolutely terrified her. Catherine was told that she would now be taken to the Tower of London, and it was at this point that she cried with all her might. She screamed and she tried to fight them off. But this was no use, as Catherine was taken by force and in a rough manner to a barge that would then transport her to the Tower of London down the River Thames. Catherine, then already scared out of her mind and petrified of what lied ahead, was taken under London Bridge. It was here that she saw the heads of Francis Deerham and Thomas Culpepper, her two apparent former lovers. Both men had been tried and convicted of high treason, and the trial for Thomas Culpepper and Francis Deerham subsequently led them to being executed at Tyburn. Henry Mannox was incredibly lucky to escape this fate, for Mannox was questioned and admitted that he had been employed by the Duchess Agnes to teach Catherine music and singing and admitted having tried to seduce Catherine, but the Privy Council felt that he had committed no crime and released him. On the 10th of December 1541, Thomas Culpepper was beheaded, but Francis Deerham was hung, drawn and quartered. Then, as customary for the time, both men had their heads placed onto spikes and displayed on London Bridge as a warning to the City of London that treason, especially against the King, was no laughing matter. Then, once Catherine had arrived at the Tower of London, she entered through Traitor's Gate and was led to her prison cell. The following morning, she would learn that her execution was scheduled for 7am on Monday the 13th of February 1542, and that she had just three more days to live. Catherine Howard was told to dispose of her soul and prepare for death. She was to die at nine o'clock the next morning. The night before her execution, Catherine spent hours praying. She is also thought to have practised placing her head onto the block, and according to Eustace Chapwee, Catherine requested that the block be brought to her so that she might know how to place herself. Her request was granted, and the block was brought into her chamber. On the morning of February 13th, Catherine woke early and made her way out of the apartment she was imprisoned in and towards the scaffold that had been erected for her execution. It is said that as Catherine approached, she was terrified and pale. She was petrified of what was coming next, so much so that she needed help to climb the stairs. Once on the scaffold, Catherine was so weak that she could hardly speak, but she said that she had merited a hundred deaths for so offending the king who had so graciously treated her. 
It is also said that she then asked all Christian people to take regard unto her worthy and just punishment of death for her offences and heinously from her youth upward in breaking all of his commandments and also against the king's royal majesty very dangerously. There is a rumour throughout history that states the following. When Catherine was on the scaffold, she said, I die a queen, but I would rather die the wife of Culpepper. Catherine was so weak that she struggled to speak. The fear had overtaken her. The executioner then gave Catherine a blindfold, which she then placed over her eyes. Then, as Catherine had practised the night before, she knelt down and placed her head on the block. There was a large crowd there to witness her death, and as the executioner raised the extremely sharp axe, the crowd gasped. Then, with one swift blow, the executioner struck Catherine's neck and removed her head from her body. It was at this point that the executioner picked up Catherine's head by her hair and removed her blindfold. He held her head up to the crowd and showed her lifeless face and proclaimed, God save the king. Catherine was then taken by her ladies after being covered with a black cloak to the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula, where she was then laid to rest. But the day was not over, for Catherine Howard's lady-in-waiting, Jane Boleyn, or Lady Rochford if you like, was next. Jane had confessed to helping facilitate the meetings between Catherine and Thomas Culpepper. Catherine Howard was only around the age of 18 when she was killed. She had risen to Queen of England in such a short time, and after only a year and a half, she was then executed for treasonous adultery. Her fall from grace is a very sad and disturbing story, for she was just a young girl that had been used and abused whilst in the care of her step-grandmother, and then placed into the employ of Henry VIII, where her life choices led her down a very dangerous path. Catherine has been remembered in history as being the fifth wife to Henry, but she should also be remembered for being brave, courageous, and facing her demons on her last day on this earth. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.